I'm Tony Northrup and this is a polarizing filter. I'm gonna show you why you don't need to drop a hundred bucks on one of these and also why you don't need ND filters or UV filters. So I'm gonna save you some money. First up, what a polarizing filter does. Let's take before and after pictures. You can see my biggest problem with the polarizing filter is having to like dig it out of your bag and screw it on. You have to take the hood off usually. It's all kind of a pain to get it threaded correctly. Notice how unnatural the gradient in the sky is with the polarizing filter. Also notice the heavier vignetting in the corners. There you can see the polarizing filter made the sky darker, but it wasn't easy to attach. It took me most of a minute to get the thing properly attached, and then even after I have it attached, I'd use my finger to rotate it around and maximize the effect of the polarizing filter. One of the negative side effects is it greatly reduces the light getting to your camera by about two stops. So my shutter speed went from 1 200th to 1 60th of a second. And that's not a problem in bright sunlight like this, but if you get into any kind of lower light, it can really cause issues and require you to use a higher ISO, then introducing more noise into your pictures. It's really easy to replicate the effects of a polarizing filter by using software like Adobe Lightroom or the free Picasa. Just by lowering the luminance of the blues or perhaps increasing the saturation of the blues a little bit. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, but I use polarizing filters to cut glare. So let's look at that effect of the polarizing filter on the water here. Notice that the polarizing filter cuts the glare on the water, but the water actually looks better without the polarizing filter. Here's an example of using a polarizing filter to cut the glare from a car. The polarizing filter makes it look worse by hiding the shininess. You might be tempted to use a polarizing filter in an aquarium to cut the glare in the glass, but losing two stops of light to it is more trouble than it's worth. It'll make you use a much higher ISO, introducing a lot more noise in your pictures. Now let's take a look at ND filters. ND filters block all the light getting to your camera, allowing you to get long shutter speeds even in bright sunlight like this. This is a 0.9 ND filter, which means it's blocking 90% of all light. So if I'm shooting something like the moving waves here, it's a nice way to get that kind of smooth effect that you might get at night. So for a long time, I recommended it for shooting water and waterfalls to capture that silky smooth movement. But one time I forgot to bring my ND filter and I decided to use a different technique instead. But first let me show you what an ND filter does. A shot without the ND filter. Now I'll put the ND filter on. So now I'll take off this ND filter because these things will cost you 80 bucks. And I know you'll look on Amazon and you'll see some $15 ND filters. Cheap ND filters cause terrible color shifts. And they all, will all cause a little bit of unsharpness just because it's something in front of your lens. So I'd rather not use it if at all possible. So what I'm gonna do instead is set this camera to continuous shooting and I'm just gonna take a whole bunch of shots. So I was using a 0.9 filter, which blocks 90% of the light. So if I were to take 10 shots here, I could get the same total exposure. Back at my computer, I just need to bring them into Photoshop or the free tool GIMP and average them together. Then I will get exactly the same results. Well, not exactly the same, they'll actually be better. The noise will be lower because it's as if I were using an ISO of say five or 10, a very low ISO. So the images will be essentially noise free. They can also potentially be sharper because they don't have that extra piece of plastic in front of my, my lens. Finally, they'll be a little bit better because when you're on a tripod like this, the tripod might shake during the middle of your exposure. And if you do a two second exposure or a 20, 20 second exposure, the whole exposure is lost. If you take 10 shots and one of them is shaky, you can take out that one photo and blend the rest of your pictures together. 
So it's a little bit of insurance there. A little bit of shake doesn't have to ruin your entire set. But finally, if you don't feel like bringing along a tripod, you can actually get the same effect by shooting handheld. You want to make sure that you can shoot a fast enough shutter speed to uh, handhold it well enough. So follow your reciprocal rule or whatever you need to do. But then if you stack enough pictures, even with handheld shooting, you can get a nice long exposure. First, delete any unsharp images. If you're using Lightroom and Photoshop, select your images, right click them, select Edit In, and then select Open as Layers in Photoshop. To calculate your effective shutter speed, multiply the number of images by the shutter speed. I took 19 images at 1 6th, giving me an effective shutter speed of about 3.2 seconds. That's 19 times 1 over 6. To calculate your effective ISO, divide the shooting ISO by the number of images. I took 19 images at ISO 100, giving me an effective ISO of about 5. Note that you still need to use a fairly slow shutter speed, such as 1 5th to 1 20th. If you were to shoot at 1 1000th, for example, you'd need to blend 1000 images to equal a 1 second exposure. In Photoshop, select all the layers by clicking the first layer and shift clicking the last layer. On the Edit menu, select Auto Align Layers. Now, from the Layer menu, select Smart Objects and Convert to Smart Object. Finally, from the layer menu, select Smart Objects, Stack Mode, and Mean. You can now close the images and see the final product in Lightroom. Because you aligned multiple images, you might need to crop the edges of the photo. There you have it, a sharp, noise-free image at an effective 3.2 seconds and ISO 5 without needing an ND filter or a tripod. If you want to make the process even faster, use my Photoshop action at sdp.io slash actions. If you don't have Photoshop, but you're comfortable using the command line, use the free ImageMagic Convert tool. You can get it from imagemagic.org. My example didn't turn out well because ImageMagic doesn't align the images. However, it'll look great if you use a tripod. Another downside of ND filters, the ND filter can make the viewfinder too dark to easily focus. You have to focus before you put the ND filter on and hope you don't change the focus while you screw it on. If you're shooting video, ND filters do still have a useful purpose, allowing you to use a slow shutter speed with a wide aperture. We use one in our studio to keep the shutter speed below the TV's refresh rate. So now let's take a look at UV filters. If you ever tried to buy a camera or a lens in a camera store, the salesman probably tried to sell you one of these, a UV filter. It's just a completely clear piece of plastic. Usually they're not that expensive, but they'll tell you that you should get one to protect your lens from scratches. And you might even think they work because you'll, they'll definitely get scratched, but that's because they're made of cheap plastic and your lens is probably made of glass. Also, you have a lens hood to protect your lens, which helps to offset it. But the biggest problem with UV filters, besides not being worth it, is they actually degrade your image quality. So let's take pictures with and without. Notice the extra flaring in the photo with the UV filter attached. And no, UV filters don't make hazy skies clearer. Sure, they filter UV, but so does the glass in your camera's lens. UV filters only make your photos worse, never better. So a lot of people are really concerned about their lens getting scratched. After all, you put a, a lot of money into it. But why would you spend a lot on a good lens and then cover it up with a cheap piece of plastic that's degrading the quality of all your images? What is the point? And I also, I'm here to testify that I am a really lazy person with lenses. I throw them in my bag all the time. I never have ever used a UV filter. I often don't use lens caps. I just use a lens hood to protect them. And basically none of my lenses have ever been scratched that way. And they've been to 20 countries and banged up. And you can see this Sigma is my favorite lens. Not a single scratch on it, despite my haphazard handling and never using a UV filter. I can't guarantee your lenses will never get scratched, but I can give you some confidence that if they do get scratched, it probably won't be a big deal. So let's sacrifice my Nifty 50 and see if we can scratch it up and find out if we actually notice any difference. My Nifty 50, no scratches, no UV filter. Let's just take a sample shot with it. Now let's try to damage this thing. I don't know how to go about damaging a lens because I've never managed to do it, but a crab claw seems pretty dangerous, so I'll...
think I've got it. I think there are scratches. Even zooming all the way in, even with the lens at its sweet spot, I just can't see any differences. Maybe I can damage it further. Maybe I just... F*** you, lens. This is such a weird thing to do. I'm not one of those channels that's gonna like wreck expensive camera gear for for views. I just I feel like this will actually save people money because they want to buy those stupid UV filters from those cheesy salesmen that keep selling them for no good reason. Oh, and look what a badass I am! I'm I'm cleaning with my shirt. I always carry a special cloth. Never use your shirt. These are ideal conditions for spotting differences in lens sharpness. A 50 megapixel camera at four to one, the lens at its sweet spot with a fast shutter speed and high contrast hard lighting. Yet, in a blind test, nobody here could see a difference. Now that you know a few scratches won't noticeably change your images, you can also save hundreds of dollars by buying scratched used lenses. Most photographers avoid scratch lenses, driving their prices way down. So between UV filters, ND filters, polarizing filters, they saved you a couple hundred bucks. And you might even have to buy different sets of filters for different lens sizes. So just give me a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, just write it down below. Thanks.